Okay, today I'm going to be trying to do the impossible and dissolve diamonds. So I have here two real diamonds. So these are actual diamonds that were sent to me by a company called Pure at Birth. And this company makes conflict-free diamonds, but they're exactly the same chemically as natural diamonds. So there's absolutely no difference between them chemically. They have the exact same crystal structure and everything, the exact same hardness, clarity, everything. So before we see if we can actually dissolve diamond, first let's figure out what diamond actually means. Why are diamonds so hard and so resistant to any chemical reaction? Now diamonds have the highest hardness and the highest thermal conductivity of any material in the world. So diamonds are extremely hard and they're made 100% out of carbon. But I have something else here that's made 100% out of carbon that's really soft. So this is called graphite. Graphite is so soft that when you rub it on paper it flakes off and that's how you use a pencil to write on paper. But with diamond, you would have no such luck. See, scratching out on the paper, nothing rubs off. And the reason it doesn't rub off is because it's harder than the paper, and so the paper breaks instead of the diamond. Whereas in this case, the graphite breaks instead of the paper, so it writes on it. So why is diamond so much harder than graphite if they're both completely made out of carbon? Well, it has to do with how the atoms are stacked together in both of these materials. So graphite is made out of carbon atoms that are connected to each other in this structure. So I'm just writing some C's here for carbon, and they're all bonded to each other like this. So in graphite, each carbon atom has three bonds associated with it. So the center one here you can see is bonded to this carbon, this one, and this one. And the way it stacks up is it makes these flat sheets together. So the carbon atoms that are in this sheet and this sheet, they're not really bonded to each other. They're only weakly bonded to each other. And so these sheets can slide past each other. So that's what makes graphite so soft. And so even though these bonds are really strong, these sheets slide past each other so easily that they can just flake off and you can write on paper with it. But in diamond, each carbon atom has four covalent bonds associated with it, and it stacks up in this cubic structure. So because carbon-carbon bonds are extremely strong, and also because there's no sheets like in graphite, that makes diamond the hardest material in the world. But that doesn't mean you can't break diamond or destroy it. If I just smash this with a hammer right now, I could break it. But they are pretty chemically resistant. That's because carbon-carbon bonds are pretty hard to break. But today I'm going to show you a solution that just might be able to break these bonds and dissolve diamond. Okay, so in order to make this, you start off with concentrated sulfuric acid. Now this stuff in and of itself is pretty nasty. I poured it on some toilet paper a few videos ago and you saw how it completely turned that toilet paper into carbon. So it dehydrated the toilet paper and left it with just pure carbon. It took out all the oxygens and hydrogens and turned them into water and just left the carbon there. So the toilet paper was just left this dark black stump. But that's not gonna work for diamond because diamond is already pure carbon. And so we need something else to be able to attack that carbon. We need some oxygen atoms. And so where I'm gonna get that oxygen from is hydrogen peroxide. So I need about 50 mils of hydrogen peroxide. Now I'm gonna slowly mix them together. Now this mixing is extremely exothermic, so I have to be pretty careful in doing it. So this was just room temperature before, and now it's hot to the touch. I would stick my thermometer in here to show you how hot it's getting, but it would dissolve the thermometer. So I'll show you what happens after I get this all mixed and what it can dissolve. Okay, now watch what happens when I put a sponge in this. <laughs> it's just dissolving it into nothing. <laughs> Thank you.
Now it's a completely clear liquid again. No sign of the sponge whatsoever. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay, now watch what this stuff does to a hot dog. Three, two, one. <laughs> Holy cow. Look at that, the hot dog just disappeared. Holy cow. It's just turning to a clear liquid again. <laughs> it completely dissolved the hot dog into nothing. That is amazing. No way. <laughs> Okay, this stuff is insane. <laughs> okay, look at that, it is a clear liquid again. That is crazy. No way. <laughs> Okay, it just completely ate that hot dog and completely just turned it into carbon dioxide. No trace left whatsoever. Okay, so how is that even possible? The sponge and the hot dog just dissolved and turned into thin air. There was just clear liquid left after. So where did it go? Well, what happened to it is it just turned into water and carbon dioxide with nothing left. The carbon dioxide bubbled off into the atmosphere and the water stayed in the jar there. So when you just have sulfuric acid, the sulfuric acid kind of acts like a catalyst to pull off the hydrogens and oxygens of the material and turn it into water. And it just leaves the carbon behind. So that's why when you pour sulfuric acid on toilet paper, for example, it just leaves this charred black behind because that's the carbon left over and the water was pulled out of it and evaporated into the air or fell into the jar below it. So sulfuric acid can't really dissolve the carbon completely. It kind of just leaves it there. So we need something else to come in and take that carbon and turn it into carbon dioxide. And that's where the hydrogen peroxide comes in. So when you put concentrated hydrogen peroxide in sulfuric acid, the sulfuric acid reacts with it and one of the products is an oxygen radical. Now oxygen radicals are extremely reactive. This oxygen radical is what can combine with the leftover carbon that the sulfuric acid carbonized and it can react with that and turn it into carbon dioxide and that just bubbles out of solution. So the fast reaction turns it into black stuff. So the black stuff dissolves, that's the carbon left over. But then the slower reaction eventually uses that oxygen radical to react with it and turn it into carbon dioxide that leaves into the atmosphere. So it's kind of these two reactions going on. So you put something in there with just carbon in it and it gets the water pulled off of it and the carbon is just left over. Then that carbon reacts and gets bubbled off as carbon dioxide until nothing's left whatsoever. And that's why it's called piranha solution. So the question is, what if we put a different form of carbon in there like diamond? Can the oxygen radical still get in there and react with it and get it to turn into carbon dioxide? So now let's measure our diamond. See how much it weighs. So it's around 0 0.02 grams. And okay, now let's put it in here. See what happens.
Okay, let's see if any of it has dissolved at all. I just rinsed it in some water. I'm gonna dry it off. So 0.018 grams. So it does look like it lost a little bit of weight in there. So the piranha solution might have been dissolving it. I did see a very slight decrease, but I'm unsure of the quality of my scale. So it could have just been the variation in the scale itself. It was slightly less, but I'm not sure that that was actually due to some of it dissolving off as carbon dioxide or not. Now I could leave it in there for a long time, but eventually all of the hydrogen peroxide reacts and bubbles off as oxygen. And so you can't really have a long-term solution of this. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't hit the subscribe button, remember to subscribe and remember to hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. I tend to look at the comments more right when my videos release. So if you want to comment or give me any questions or suggestions, remember to hit the bell button and head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.